After a few months of work and a little more than 20 beta versions, that's it, Fluent 1.5 is available. If you come on this channel, my name is Rudy, I'm the developer of the add-on. And I will explain you everything that's new on this version. And you will see, we have some good thing to view. We are going to start with the quickest things uh, before to get the big stuff, uh, because I know you, I know you. If I start with the most interesting, you will watch only that. Keep the video and I will have question about the rest as it's explained. Let's go. The toolbox menu appear after changing the search bar in Blender 2.9. In this version of Blender, the search function searches only in the menus. So I created a new menu for all the small functions that didn't have one. You will find the toolbox menu in the by menu and in the panel. The simplified menu is a menu that has been through for beginners and who use Fluent mostly to make cuts. Available as an option in the preferences, you have the uh, you have in this menu only what you need for the cuts. It's true uh, that you don't always need everything all the time, so some people prefer to have everything in the menu, other prefer the side panel, but a mix of the two can be just interesting. Use the menu for all the most frequent tasks and, and come back to the panel from time to time to add grids, cables, pipes, etc. Last little thing in the, mo uh, in the interface modification, the shortcut that's allowed to the edit object has been replaced by a shortcut to make inset. Yes. <laughs> because in the end, nobody was using the shortcut and it also seemed to be more consistent than the three available shortcuts makes cuts since that's still the main job of the add-on. The autocomplete function that allows us to apply all the modifiers and booleans. The second one is a nudge time saver. The first change is what happens when you hold down the, the Alt key while clicking on the button. In this case, all the changes are applied, all modifiers are applied, except for the bevel, which remains uh, an editable bevel. This is uh, how I always, personally, always use my autocomplete function. And so, the major change is that now when you use this autocomplete function, this grenade, um, a model made by Ben, one of the uh, beta testers, uh, will be an excellent example. The seams are automatically marked and the pattern of the mesh and red. But beware, I like challenge myself. Uh, so I made an algorithm that will even mark a seam in the length of all your cylinder, which will allow you to unwrap them more easily than ever. Most of the things that are explained here for the pipe tool will also be valid for the cable. So be careful, I won't repeat myself, the video will be long enough uh, as it is. First big change, yes, that is finally the pipe are editable. And I took the opportunity to, um, uh, to add a bunch of new features. Another very practical thing is that you can now reuse an already made pipe to set up another one. I use the reuse button and I click on an already existing pipe to copy its parameters on the new pipe. Another new feature is the ring. I have totally redesigned uh, the way to make them and now if you like, if you want, 
you can modify them directly in the Blender interface without going through Fluent. All you have to do is go to the custom properties uh, and you will find all the parameters, the same as for Fluent. Still about rings, you can now use your, use the add your ring button and click on an object to use it as a ring. Some options are still available such as adjusting uh, the size of the object and its position along the pipe. Last thing about the pipe, you now have the possibility to uh, use the object of your choice to repeat it all along the pipe. First example, I have an object that is actually a section of the pipe with a ring on it. I use the add your design function. You can see that my object is repeated all along the pipe and some adjustments are still available with your adjust your design button. Now, here, is another way to use the, the add your design button by selecting this object which looks like a ring I get this first result which could be similar to a vent pipe but by pressing the C key I can change the distance between each repetition of the object. In this case, it will be interesting to be able to make the pipe reappear. Uh, and this is what I can do with the BK. The big new feature of the cable tools is the physical simulation. You will now be able to simulate gravity and all this in the simplest and fastest way possible in terms of calculation. Just a demonstration. Simply place the cable with two clicks, then use the simulate button. You then switch to edit mode. Now you can set the length um, over which gravity will gradually take effect. Demonstration. Here, um, I keep the default selection and press enter. I make a cable and this time I use Ctrl plus key to increase my selection and press enter. Remember, only the Ctrl plus and minus keys are available when selecting vertices. A new model of cables is now available, the chain. Everything works as usual. You have an adjustment menu by uh, holding left click. Everything is editable. Link length, link uh, thickness, link size, distance between each link. In short, it's fluent. Combined with the simulation tool, you can get a very nice result. An extremely interesting element that was asked to me by one of the beta testers is the ability to replace the original links by custom links. And this is what is possible with the um, use your link button. Once again, some adjustments remain uh, at your disposal, even on your customized model. We finally get to the tool I've been thinking about for months, which I start to coding in August. Let's start with a small demonstration before talking about installation and configuration. About the use, it's extremely simple. You, you, you just have to make an object for your first use made simple, just a, a cube with, uh, with one cut, for example. Keep your object selected and click on the button cloth panel. At this point, you just have to select the faces that will be transformed into fabrics. Press enter. The program is set and the simulation starts. Please note that by default, the simulation stops uh, after uh, 30 frames. Once the 30 frames is reached, 
the simulation is stopped and you can continue your model. Now, the configuration items. Remesh allows to ask for a rotopology of the surface in order to obtain something usable for the simulation. This process requires the use of a separate program if you selected uh, non quad faces. For the moment, you have two options, Instant Mesh, which is a free open source program that you can download from the internet. Uh, you will find the necessary links in the Fluent documentation on the Fabric panel page. The other program that you can be used is Quadrimesh, uh, which is a paid add-on, but if you have, you can use it. You have then a drop-down menu called Topology. Here you can choose the topology used for the simulation. You can imagine that it has been tested um, a lot, so here is some useful information. Quad is uh, the safest and fastest option. Triangulate gives more natural results and works on all surfaces, just like the POKE version. The most important thing to remember is the choice of garment. It is um, the choice that gives the most natural and detailed results. But I noticed uh, that it doesn't work very well on curved surfaces. In short, whatever the solution you choose, if you take something other than quad, you will have to ask for a retopology after simulation in order to obtain a perfectly smooth surface. The option separate by faces allows you to, uh, to request that each selected face be an independent panel. This is the big difference between this and that. Finally, the phrase option allows you to apply or not the simulation. The advantage of applying it, uh, it is that if you have other panel to do, uh, to do you won't permanently restart the simulation of all uh, the fabrics again and again. If you are a little more advanced users of Blender, uh, you might appreciate not applying the simulation right away so that you can make more adjustment in the Blender simulation panel. Now that you're aware of the biggest changes in Fluent 1.5, I would like to take this opportunity to once again thank the beta testers who had a lot of patience and tested more than 20 different beta versions to make, to make the, uh, the, the official release the, big, uh, the best it could be. Thank you, thank you so much, you are great! Um, if you're still here, maybe it's because you, um, you've been following me for a while and so, so here are some info about uh, the continuation of my projects. Fluent uh, using a third-party program gave me some ideas for collaboration with another add-on. No advantage uh, in um, redoing what others are already doing very well. And as <laughs> I'm not a megalomaniac, I might as well uh, set their work forward rather than copy it. And the other great project is a new add-on. The, the people who are on the Discord know, uh, know what I'm talking about. Um, and quick info, the mask, this mask, this one, was entirely made with my two add-ons, Fluent and the other one. So there you have it. I let you speculate on what the add-on is about. As for the release date, I had originally planned Black Friday, but considering the month uh, spent on the last Fluent update that um, I started in August, it might be hot, very hot, so I don't know, but 
Christmas seems to be um, a correct goal. To help me continue to the adventure, don't forget a uh, little like, share, all this you know. We meet uh, for tutorials because yes, after all that, we'll need tutorials. Go to the next one. Bye. Digital, share, knowledge, grow together.